Most people in America are looking for a form of faith, but they don't acknowledge what they're looking for is faith. It usually takes a loss. It usually takes a transition. It usually takes an awkward position for them to recognize how much they need God. When people recognize how much they need God, they are very validated for that experience. They realize that the thing they've been missing most of their adult life is the Lord's presence in their life. Some people do go apeshit and overboard about their passion for the Lord, but there is nothing wrong with that underneath their U.S. Constitution or any gumption of spiritual work. Because a person who's trying to improve their faith, trying to include themselves in a church, in a synagogue, in an organization, in a Kabbalah center, and wherever they go to learn about God, is going to do that today. They might explore many places to find out where God is and in what spaces, but openly they have the right to do that in every way. The First Amendment gives us freedom of speech. It also gives us freedom of religion, freedom of the press. So if someone is learning about the Lord, they have the right to share it in their storytelling way as if it's a press conference for them today. And for some people like me who are in marketing of people, we have to express to people that everyone has a life balance to produce. And life balance, in my estimation, begins with the foundations of faith. Because faith is what keeps you going when the tough times come. Faith is what keeps you going when you're not feeling well. Faith in other people is sort of hard because so many people like to lie in their towel. American citizens are learning to lie more and more to other people, but is it good for America? And the answer is no. The liars of America are destroying America. You see, it starts with a lie and then you forget what you said to me. But I remember quite wholeheartedly what you told me, that we were friends. But then you lie until the end. Then there's people who like to steal, and the stealing that they start with is what they deal with. Not at all. It starts them to think, well, if I stole that, then I can take this. And if I took that, then I might steal that. And they go through this whole process of, of educating themselves that it's okay to take. And it's not. What you've been doing is taking from the house of the Lord that belongs to someone else. It's their door. It's their home. It's their property. It's their possessions. It's their presence from other people. And you thought you had the right to steal them. You don't, by any estimation of the Lord's rules or America's rules, or society rules or international rules. World treaties are built on these rules. But you want to be different. Great. So be different by your own skill sets. Be different by your own talents. Be different by your own performance and productivity that gets you to earn what you're worth. But if you're not worth anything, by all means, keep stealing, keep lying, keep taking, keep, keep buying for someone else's opportunities and never see your own. You see, a person of faith, a person of opportunity, is always looking for more opportunities than they can find. They're always available, they're always open to having more things available, more project work, more opportunities, because everyone has to survive, everyone has to thrive at some point, and most everyone has the right to say yes or no to new opportunities. It's how we grow. You see, you don't know what you don't know. But then you learn and you grow. But if you don't know what you don't know and you don't grow, but you keep stealing from other people in their industries, and then you learn that, hey, there's laws that could throw you in jail or in prison, then you just screwed your whole life, didn't you? Because you chose to lie, you chose to steal, and you chose to think no one will ever know.